Hello, in this video, we're going to talk to you about how to improve your shooting technique using some of our drills and skills. Our goal here is for you to get an understanding of how to learn how to shoot and some practice drills that you can use for learning good technique. This will get you started with understanding how to learn to shoot better. A good coach can help ensure that you're doing the drills correctly and help you progress with your shooting technique. Remember that every drill is just a tool to help you in your progression to good shooting technique. You can use the drills when you first begin shooting to help you learn the correct positions, or you can go back to the drills as you need to when you're working to improve your shooting technique. You only need to do the drills for as long as it takes for you to learn the skill. Often learning new skills is conditional on two things. The first is learning the body movements of the skills, which muscles to use and which bones to move. And the second is having the strength to do the skill correctly using your own bow. If you can do the skill correctly with a stretch band or a light bow, but you can't do it with your bow, it's often the case that you just need to get stronger. We have a few other videos that help you gain good shooting strength and conditioning with bow drills and other exercises to help you get the strength you need to be able to shoot with good shooting technique. The other reason that archers don't use good technique is they just don't know how. They haven't learned proper technique or they don't have the coordination yet, the proprioception or body awareness to do the skill correctly. This is where the drills and skills can really help with deliberate practice to learn the body movements for good shooting technique. The earlier you learn to get your body in the correct position for shooting, the easier your shooting will be throughout your career. Some of the things to think about are the first is a progression of resistance. So starting out uh, with just using your bare hands and then moving to a stretch band and then to a light training bow. This will give you the opportunity to be able to learn the skills without having the interference of maybe the bow being too heavy or too much weight or just a distraction of shooting. Remember you're doing the drills to learn the skills. Do what you need to do to get it right. Then you decide when you're ready to move on and when you need to take a step or when you need to take a step back to get the skills learned correctly. Feedback is also really important for you to learn good shooting technique and we'll show you how to use uh, different kinds of feedback as we go through this video. You need to know if you're doing the drills and skills correctly or not. Your coach can help you understand what you're looking for or you can use videos of top archers to see what their technique looks like. Use mirrors to give you instant feedback to help you become aware of proper positions and movements of shooting. As soon as you've mastered that though, move on to delayed feedback using cameras or video. To start, we're going to look at what an archer should look like at full draw. Specifically, we're looking at posture, body and head position, and alignment. We'll look at the archer from the full draw position in three dimensions and explain some of the drills that will help you get into that position. First, looking at the body and head position. We look at the archer from this view, from the front. Starting with the stance, the feet should be at least shoulder width apart or inside of the feet to the outside of the shoulders. A good wide stance is a foundation for good posture and body position. Looking at the archer from the front, we should see the archer standing straight with the hips over the feet, the chest over the hips, and the head centered on the shoulders. A good drill for beginners before they even shoot their first shot is the 1-2-3 alignment drill so they get the feel of this position at full draw. So the archer would start by just standing up straight, looking straight ahead. And then we begin by first lifting the shoulders up and then pushing the fingertips down to the ground. Lifting the shoulders up and pushing the fingertips down to the ground. The idea here is to get them the feeling of shooting with their uh, shoulders down. Now the one, two, three alignment drill, the first step, the one is to raise their hands up and do a T position. Two, turn the head to look at the target and three, bring their back hand to their anchor position. You can take a picture of yourself in this position at the end of the drill and compare it to picture yourself at full draw with your bow. Are you standing up straight? You want to look for an hourglass shape in your core and your chest and not a bender bow. Often we see archers that are leaning back away from the target or they're pushing it with their chest and their bow towards the target. And these are some of the things you want to avoid. Take a look at yourself with a picture or video and see that you're standing up straight.
The next dimension we'll look at is posture, which we observe from behind the archer. We look to see that their bum is tucked under and their chest down. The important part about posture is that you maintain it through the entire shot. Archers will often lose their posture as they raise their bow to the target. They'll also lose their posture when they draw the bow. So they might maintain the posture as they raise up, but as they draw the bow. And this is often because they're just not strong enough to draw the bow properly. So the way to practice good posture is looking into a mirror. First practice just getting into a good posture position. Okay, getting your bottom tucked under and your chest down and making sure that your back is flat and that you're just in a straight line. Good posture is actually a very natural position, although it can feel quite awkward at first, especially if you've been shooting for a while without good posture. Get a picture of yourself shooting from this angle and see what your posture looks like. Is it something you need to work on? So in the mirror, practice getting good posture and then look to maintain the posture as you're going through the movements of the set, set up, and draw. And you practice this over and over until you get your posture feeling really right. We've already shown you the one, two, three alignment drill and how to set your posture. The next drill we'll show you is the set setup drill. Simply raise your hands from the set position to the setup or pre-draw position. Your hands should be about the level of your eyes and both hands the same distance from the ground. This is a higher setup than the T-draw position, but the arrow sh still should be parallel to the ground so that it's not unsafe. Practice this drill in front of a mirror. Make sure you're keeping your shoulders down and relaxed, just raising your hands. Watch in the mirror to see that you are maintaining your posture as you do this drill so you learn the feeling of keeping your chest down as you raise your arms. This is a good time to get good feedback from your coach as well. The half draw drill begins from your setup position and helps you learn the right way to draw the bow. From this position, draw the bow to anchor, making sure you're using your entire shoulder unit as one piece rather than just rotating your arm. Make sure that you also maintain your posture while you're working on this drill. Your hands will drop together as you draw the bow. This is also a good exercise to strengthen the muscles used to draw. Start with a stretch band to learn the motion correctly. Then move up to a light bow and then to your bow. Use the rotation of your whole shoulder to drag the relaxed string arm and hand to full draw. Overhead video feedback is also a great way to see if you're doing this motion correctly. The release motion drill is one of the most important drills for you to learn early on. Working on this drill will help you to have a better and more consistent release. Starting with just your bare hands from the anchor position, keep your curled fingers on your neck, move your hand back along your jawline, until you finish with your hand just under your ear. Make sure you're keeping your curled, relaxed fingers on your neck. This will help to make sure you're using the right muscles through the release rather than rotating your arms like this. This is a great drill that can improve your release in just a few weeks. Use the mirror to make sure that you're doing it correctly. Fingers hooked correctly on the string is a skill that can have a big effect on your shooting. Make sure you get a deep hook where your fingernails can't be seen when you are at anchor. This doesn't mean that you have the string farther down your fingers, just that they are wrapped around the string deeper. A deeper hook will actually help you to have a more relaxed hand and a smoother release. You can use a bucket or a bag or a stretch band to help you get a deep hook where you feel like you can have a totally relaxed hand without the bucket dropping or the stretch band leaving your fingers. You should have your hands so relaxed with the deep hook that you feel like you could fall asleep and it won't leave your hand. Make sure that you maintain your hook all the way from the set position until you release. The real skill of an archer is how smoothly they can let the string go. 
the finger release drill can help you learn that. You want to start thinking of letting the string go and not letting go of the string. It's a subtle difference, but it's one that can make a big difference in your shooting. So you want to think of letting the string go through your fingers or pulling your fingers off the string or letting the string go around your fingers. But you don't want to think about letting go or opening your fingers or even relaxing your fingers because those can affect your, your execution. Now if you combine all these drills, a good hook with the finger release drill and the release motion drill, you'll have a world-class release. You really should be able to rotate your bow arm so that the crack of your elbow is straight up and down. You can first try to do this with your bow. If you can't rotate your elbow with your bow, then you need to take a step back and learn to rotate your bow arm. For this drill, set your bow hand on a door or a pole. Practice rotating your elbow. Make sure to keep your shoulder in position so it doesn't rise up or roll forward and just practice rolling your elbow back and forth until you get the coordination of the movement. A great way to practice at home and wrapping up all the drills into the whole shot sequence is a four-step shot sequence drill. Thinking through each of the previous drills, start with your correct stance and posture, then go to the set position, set up, draw and release. The release will put together the drills of the hook, the release motion, and the one, two, three release drill, or finger release drill. Start slowly to make sure you're performing each step and drill correctly. Then as you become more comfortable and as you're getting the steps right, you begin to speed up the motions until you're getting into the natural rhythm of your shot. This can be great practice to do while you're away from your bow, at home or on holiday, to improve your technique by focusing on things you might want to change. Hi, I'm Duncan Busby and I'm going to show you a few ways you can practice your compound release at home without shooting a bow in order to help build up consistency in your shot. So first thing we're going to need is a release aid. I've got my hinge release, uh, my trigger release. Um, for a lot of you learning the, the proper way to execute a shot uh, with back tension, even if you don't want to use a back tension release um, while you're shooting, it can be a good idea to go through a few of these routines with a back tension. So whether that's a hinge style like the one I've got here, or whether that's a resistance style back tension release. Um, a resistance style release is where the release will activate once you build up to a specific tension in your shot. Uh, so you will set it to work with your bow's holding weight. So once you pull two, three, four pounds heavier than that holding weight, the release will activate. They're a really good way of learning how to pull into the shot correctly. Uh, if you don't want to use one of those, or you don't have one of those, you can you can use your trigger release, you can use a hinge style release, basically what, whatever release you are planning on using with your bow. So I've got a few other things here. I'll start off with the simplest one, um, and that is literally just a piece of string. Uh, what I've done is I've tied a loop in the string that is my draw length plus the D loop. So I know when I'm actually at simulating full draw with this, that's the draw length my bow will be so I can practice the release properly. So I'm gonna show you with the back tension release first and you simply loop it round your thumb, put your arm out to the position it would be once you're at full draw, get yourself into your anchor position and then just execute your shot normally. You can also do this with trigger release, which I've got here. So again, exactly the same thing, loop it around your thumb, 
coming to your reference point and then just squeeze as you normally would to execute the shot. Uh, so that's just a simple piece of string. We've all got a piece of string lying around at home somewhere, so this is a really cheap and effective way of practicing your release without needing to shoot your bow. So if you want to simulate the weight of a bow in your hand, um, you can use the rope that I showed you before, uh, and you can attach that to a dumbbell um, or any other weight that's easy to hold. A dumbbell's nice to do because it does have a nice handle in the middle so it gives you something to to sit in your hand correctly now when you're setting this up you don't want to go crazy heavy you don't need a lot of weight in your hand uh, you just need something there that it's going to simulate some of the weight of your bow it doesn't have to be as heavy as your bow would be you don't want to be straining to do this uh, you don't want to be potentially injuring your shoulders so don't overdo it don't think more is better uh, go with something light and sensible it's just something to give you a little bit more from the simple rope that we used before. Uh, it's going to allow you to simulate holding some weight, physical weight, in your bow hand at the same time as executing a shot. So, again, I've made this to match the draw length of my bow plus the D-loop. Uh, I've actually made this out of a long piece of dilute material. You can use anything, piece of string, as long as it's strong enough and you're not going to snap it by putting tension on it, it'll work fine. So, exactly as we did with the simple piece of string before, I'm going to attach the release aid. So we're going to come up to your full draw position and your anchor point, and obviously keeping hold of the dumbbell so it doesn't fall on the floor. Just activate your shot as normal. Um, use any style of release aid that you want with that. As I said before, training with a back tension release is a really good idea, even if you don't intend to use one uh, with your bow. It's, it is a great way of learning which muscles you should be using in your back to execute the shot. Uh, it's, it's also, it's going to help really build up a bit of strength and get you used to pulling against the stops on your bow. Um, so just using simple ropes, obviously you can use one with a weight, you can use one without a weight. It depends how technical you want to make it. Um, yeah, it's just a simple piece of string. It's very, very cheap. It's very easy to make and it can allow you to practice your execution, your shot execution, your release uh, work. It can allow you to do that at home without needing to get down to the club and shoot a bow. Uh, it's a really good, effective way of building up that muscle memory, and building up the release technique uh, that you need to develop an accurate and consistent shot. Uh, I also find it's a really good way of setting a release aid up. So if you're using one for the first time and you're not sure how the tension is set on it, you can use this rope method uh, in order to see how much tension it takes for the release to activate. Just so you don't get any nasty shocks when you do have a bow in your hand, you're not going to have any misses, you're not going to punch yourself in the face. There can just be no accidents, so it's a really effective way of setting a release aid up. Uh, don't forget though, when you're doing this, you are trying to simulate shooting a bow, so make sure that you get your bow arm in the right position. You want it as, as extended as you would normally have it. Don't forget to keep your bow shoulder in the position that you would normally shoot with it in. And don't forget to make sure you can get into your reference point. You want to be in exactly the same reference point you would be while shooting your bow. Don't do anything different because then you're going to be practicing different with different muscles. You're going to be practicing a different technique than you're intending to shoot with. So it's almost going to be a waste of time. So you pick your bow up and you're going to be doing something completely different than what you've been practicing. So try to keep it as similar as you possibly can. Now these are the simple ways of doing it. You can also use a stretchy clinny band. Um, we've all got one of those in our bow cases that we use for warm-ups. Uh, you can attach a D-loop to that and then you can use that. So you've actually got some draw weight resistance on the shot so you can be practicing holding some weight. That can also help uh, build your muscles up a little bit, get you used to some holding weight. Uh, you don't have to do it, but it's just a, that is another option. Uh, any sort of combination of these, if you can work out a way of 
attaching a clingy band to the dumbbell um, as you've got some mass weight and you've got some holding weight that would work as well um, there are also quite a few tools you can get training tools um, that simulate shooting a bow so they range anything from just a simple handle with some weights on it and some stretchy elastic all the way up to a almost like a, a full bow uh, the accu bow is uh, a really good one you can actually set the tension that you're holding on that and it is it's all the size of a small compound bow and it has some weight to it as well so you you're practicing with something a little bit more realistic in your hands uh, there's some really cool accessories you can get for that as well that allow you to simulate aiming so if you're looking for something a bit more complex than just a bit of string and some weight then definitely look at the the Acubo trainer because um, I think they're a really good training tool fortunately I don't have one so I can't actually show you that um, but they are stocked in most good archery shops so have a little look out for that if you want to go more technical if not just simple piece of string or release rope and get practicing <laughs>